Now, before we get to the Sunday evening address, I want for everyone to make certain that they're subscribed to the channel. If you're new here, go ahead and subscribe. You already like the message, so get more of it. And if you think that you're already subscribed, make sure that you are. YouTube's been spontaneously unsubscribing a number of people, and I want to make sure you're not one of them. Also, be sure to hit the bell icon so you can get notifications. But don't depend on YouTube to let you know when a new video is dropped. You follow me on Twitter. Not only do you get to keep up with my little pearls of wisdom that I drop, but you also will be told there whenever a video drops and you don't have to worry about YouTube not telling you. And be sure to help spread the word. YouTube's trying to strangle the new voices of black media, trying to stymie our influence and potency because they work for the exact same white supremacist forces as the alphabet networks do. You don't want to get bamboozled by white supremacy. It's always a good thing whenever you spread the word and let other people know about this YouTube channel and the other new voices of black media. Make sure to share this video and others like it from the new voices of black media with as many people as you can. There are other people who will be just as appreciative of hearing this message as you've been. Now, that said, look, it's a pathetic falling star. Oh yeah, Kamala Harris, she's going down in flames. Her campaign at this point is, to all intents and purposes, over. We're just waiting for her to go ahead and throw in the towel, but you got these white media outlets who are trying to find a way to make the bad news look not quite so pathetic. Instead of Politico's headline being Kamala Harris shakes up flailing campaign, all they had to do was delete the first L and they would have had it right. It's a failing campaign. It's already failed. Kamala Harris is done. And even at this late date, she's still finding ways to screw up. She months ago gave up the idea that she was going to be branding herself as a black candidate because the white media had assured her, don't worry, if you say it, we're just going to repeat it and carpet bomb the public with this and hey, nobody has more influence than the white media. At least that's what they thought. And Politico begins by saying that Kamala Harris's campaign has dropped so far in the polls that it risks becoming a postscript. Well, you can figure out that. This ain't a postscript. This is a postmortem at this point. She's already done. Kamala Harris's presidential campaign is already dead. It just doesn't have the good manners to keel over already. That's the only thing missing. But when you read Politico's article, they are basically laying out what we've been telling you for the longest time, that Kamala Harris is no leader. She couldn't lead a DA's office and can't even lead a presidential campaign. Oh, but don't worry, she can lead. She'll be able to handle the presidency. She just can't handle a presidential campaign. As Politico tells the story, aides behind the scenes said that a lack of clarity among staff was largely to blame for the campaign's problems. And look who the campaign chair is, Maya Harris, Kamala Harris's sister. You know, they always advise that when doing business, you want to be real careful about having family members directly with their hands on the money because that causes all kinds of problems. Well, the same goes for presidential campaigns. If you're front-loading your campaign leadership with a whole bunch of family members, how the world are you going to check them? How the world are you going to sit here and say, I found the best qualified people to get me into the White House. Why, here's my sister. Now, she's never run a presidential campaign before. She's never been a president. Never advised one. Oh, but I'm sure that she'll help out a lot. The political article goes on to talk about inexperience across the organization. And how this was feeding a growing sense of indecision and aimlessness inside the campaign. And this is coming from Politico. This is supposed to be one of the white media's favorite little mouthpieces, and yet they cannot cover it up. They can't find some way to sugarcoat it. They have to just go ahead and admit the ugly truth. Kamala Harris's campaign is in horrendous trouble, and it has been for a long time. Politico then goes on to note that the campaign did not start holding regular senior staff meetings until September, 
nine months after launching. That means just last month, just a few weeks ago, Kamala Harris finally decided that maybe her senior staff needs to actually meet with one another. I would love to say that the campaign was on autopilot, but that would assume that there was actually somebody at the controls. Oh yeah, let's hear it for Kamala Harris. Let's hear it for that I bring youth and I bring energy and I bring experience. Yeah, just not experience at leadership, that's all. Just not experience at organization, that's all. She brings experience, all right. You can ask low-down Willie Brown about what kind of experience Kamala has. You know, speaking of which, reminds me about how I told you guys that back when she was Willie Brown's plaything, he got her on California's Medical Insurance Advisory Board, and this woman, who had barely made it out of law school, what the hell did she have that qualified her to be on a medical advisory board? Because California state law said that you had to have a few years of experience in the medical industry. You had to be like a doctor or a healthcare provider. Kamala Harris was none of those things. She was a law graduate. Not even a lawyer proper, just a law graduate. And yet Kamala Harris, even back then, was talking about experience. Exper That's just her bullcrap term that she drags out, that she puts in front of people. And, well, it seems that the electorate, led by the new voices of black media, are giving her little talk around the truth thumbs down. Yet Kamala Harris figured that she, being a professional BS artist, all she had to do was bamboozle the people one last time. Yeah, but this is different. Kamala Harris is a fool who wasn't able to actually see what was right in front of her. And this is now proving to be Kamala Harris's undoing. The old days of figuring that you'll get a couple of dumb Negroes on the white media to plead your case for you, those days are done. You don't get to play that game anymore. Joy Reid ain't going to put in the good word for you. Roly-poly Martin ain't going to be able to shuck and jive for you. The breakfast schlubs aren't going to be able to bring you on so you can talk some nonsense about how much you love fried chicken. No, what's happening now is that people, especially black folks, are starting to get their heads right and they're getting serious. Because there are people who are getting, getting the black vote on code. And Kamala Harris figured that she would talk around it. And the white media figured we're going to help her out by basically saying that the black vote isn't so important. Or at least black men aren't. Now, how the hell are you going to make it to the White House when fully 50% of the black vote has been considered to be off limits to you? You've written off 50% of the black vote. Oh, but the black vote's going to get you in a high office. The math don't work. No matter how many weasel words you try to front load your political rhetoric with. But this is what Kamala Harris has done. She's taken refuge inside of her own dream world. And what's happening is the new voices of black media are shaking that heifer awake. Now you had the San Francisco Chronicle. Kamala Harris's own hometown paper. And what they said was that she needs to make sure she stays in front of the camera. Now, of all the stupid advice you could be giving Kamala Harris, that one in particular is stupid for two reasons. One, it's kind of redundant. She's been doing everything that she can to stay in front of the cameras to begin with. So why tell her to do something that, she, that has basically been her pathetic M.O., her bare bone strategy. I'm just going to try to get as much camera time as possible. She's been doing that since she was running for Senate. She's been doing that ever since she decided that she was going to throw her jughead crown in the ring and she figured she was going to lay the groundwork for a presidential run. And the second reason that it's stupid is the more Kamala Harris gets in front of the camera, the worse she looks. Now, the San Francisco Chronicle's advice to her, this is part of the white media in California giving a clearly insincere pro forma show of support. This is just them doing this just because they have to. They know she's done. And when you read the article, the tone and tenor of it makes it loud and clear that the San Francisco Chronicle fully understands that Kamala Harris's presidential campaign has the smell of grisly death all over it. They're looking and going, forget it, she's going down all hands aboard. They're just showing political courtesy to a fellow Californian, but it's no more than that. The San Francisco Chronicle quotes some 
political consultant who says that Kamala needs to stay on the media's radar. If you're not being talked about, it's really hard to gain support. So I think in the debate, whether it's a viral moment or just being part of the back and forths on the debate stage that everyone replays the next day, what she doesn't want to do is fade into the background and be forgotten. So that's the grand advice. She needs to stay on the media's radar. It does you no good to stay on the media's radar if every time the public sees you, they either yawn or they are otherwise turned off or otherwise disgusted by you. It's not enough to simply get in front of the freaking cameras. That's the old advice that the white media always gives to every candidate. It's all about airtime, all about airtime. Airtime has its place. But if the voters are generally looking at you and going, I don't want to vote for this person, airtime doesn't help you. It hurts you because people get tired of looking at you. But that's their advice. She needs to stay on the media's radar. That means stay in front of the camera. And look at what this guy advises. In other words, she needs to do something that's going to get people to talk about her. She needs a viral moment to be part of the back and forth on the debate stage. Uh, yeah, because that's worked out so well for Kamala Harris so far, hasn't it? These are all things that she's already doing. Her entire problem is that she's in front of the camera. The more people see her, the less they like her. Tulsi Gabbard humiliated her in Detroit of all places, the most populous majority black city in the country. And that black audience applauded and cheered when Tulsi Gabbard read Kamala's behind about her injustice record. And that told the country everything they needed to know about Kamala Harris's support in the black community. It told the other contenders on the stage everything they needed to know. She was a wounded animal and they could all see it. A candidate simply cannot manufacture a viral moment in the presidential debates in this day and age. Donald Trump is pretty much cornered the market on that one. And the only way you're going to do worse than Trump is to do something that basically either you're going to run across stage buck naked or perhaps you'll videotape yourself committing some indecent act with a farm animal. I don't know what the hell you're going to do, but it's not about a viral moment. Not if you're trying to become president. This is the kind of wording that might sound good for a YouTuber who's trying to get their views to take off, though that almost never works because so many people are trying it. Or if you're somebody who's trying to get your Twitter feed to take off, that kind of thing, or your Instagram to get some more views. But when it comes to becoming president of the United States, this is terrible advice. Victory and defeat starts at the grassroots, not with the white media. Kamala Harris violated the most primal rule of politics, and she is now paying the price. And all this advice she's getting from these idiots just reinforces more of the same. Good, I hope she listens to them. The sooner that her pathetic play-acting at being a presidential candidate is over, the sooner that she gives up the ghost and stops pretending as if she's still in the race somehow, the better for everyone. All these half-baked suggestions from these so-called political experts, all they're doing is telling Kamala Harris she needs to win the news cycle. Problem is, that's not how you win the presidency. To advise Kamala to mix it up on stage with the other candidates and to challenge them, that won't work. Harris, as the San Francisco Chronicle reports, got a bump in the polls after the first debate when she confronted Joe Biden in personal terms about his legacy on race. But she failed to replicate a breakout moment in subsequent debates. You want to know why? It's because the base of the Democrat Party, the black vote, are looking for candidates who are going to pledge to us the tangibles that we're demanding. So if you think that a viral moment is somehow going to get us to overlook the fact that you ain't bringing us our tangibles, you're sadly mistaken. But that's what they're hoping to do. That's what their entire suggestion strategy to Kamala Harris is about. Well, we got to distract people from the fact that you're not going to actually do anything for black people. So we need we need some viral moments. If we can just get some viral moments, something that'll get people talking about something other than the fact that you ain't bringing black folks no tangibles. That's what all this so-called advice and these suggestions are meant to do. It's meant to give her a way to BS her way to the presidency. For Kamala Harris to try to start spitball fights with the front runners. I told you that white audiences in particular would very quickly get tired of seeing this woman of color constantly wagging her finger at white people and constantly telling white people off. 
All of this, this supposed woman of color telling white people what they should and should not do that stuff. They white voters in particular would that would rub them the wrong way. They may not be in revolt after she did it with Joe Biden. But as I told you, if she kept going, deciding that she was going to be challenging Bernie Sanders and lately she's decided to go with Elizabeth Warren, white viewers in particular, were going to look at that and say, hmm, uppity little negress, ain't she? That's what their reaction would be. And that's exactly what it's been. She's failing to get black people to fall at her feet. And white voters are becoming just forget about becoming. They are totally turned off by her. And the advice that she's getting, the best that the white media can advise her to do is keep doing more of the same. Yeah, because it's been working great so far, hasn't it? Given how pathetically Kamala Harris is running her own campaign, only a lunatic would think that she'll magically figure out how to run the presidency with less chaos. You see, with the white media and Kamala Harris's campaign and their two-bit suck-up psychopaths online simply cannot get through their thick skulls is that Kamala Harris's problem isn't her staff per se, but rather the empty suit two-bit con woman who chose these goofballs in the first place. Kamala Harris was never running a political campaign. She was running a political scam. And she got called out. The problem isn't that she hasn't settled on a campaign message either. The problem is that she never had one to begin with. I've been telling you guys since 2017 that all Kamala Harris has been doing, and it was excruciatingly obvious to me from the jump, all she's been doing is copying and pasting Barack Obama's 2004 to 2006 political operation, where every time you looked up, he was constantly getting into pointless arguments with Bush administration officials, preening for the cameras during Hurricane Katrina, constantly trying to find some way to get the white media to notice him and try to look as presidential as possible in the, in the process. I'm going to elevate my profile by getting into arguments and fights with people bigger than me. Okay, well, that did work for Barack Obama, but circumstances differ greatly. In fact, it's a completely different political landscape from the one that pervaded in 2008. Things have changed a lot. We have finally reached the tipping point, and the most important aspect was when the new voices of black media had reached a critical mass of young black people. The rules have changed. Kamala's trying to use the old Democrat political machine, her pals in the white media, her sorority buddies, and her California political connections, and it's not working. Going to these old, wrinkled-up black pastors for support these pulpit pimps, that ain't gonna cut it. You can get the old black vote to turn out, but they are not and have never been enough to get any candidate into the White House. Obama only got into the White House because young black people turned out in large numbers because they were daring to take a chance on him. Young black people dared to support him. And that turned out to be a massive mistake with horrifying results. But this is a mistake that just enough young black people have learned from. And it's made it where now they want a radical solution. They're finally ready to hear what we have to say. The old game with the old rules and the old players and the old tricks won't work. Not anymore. The old political machine where you had a ready army of black puppets and black preachers and you had a bunch of people, community activists on the payroll and you have some black mouthpieces in the white media who you give a show to or at least put them on a panel and that's supposed to be where black people sort of look and go, oh, there's some Negro who's saying X, Y, Z. Well, uh, I should go along with it. After all, he must have something on the ball. He must. There must be something basically right about his, what he's saying. Otherwise, the white media wouldn't have put him on TV. That game is over now. And the old generation, the black baby boomers who were too lacking in courage or integrity to fight white supremacy, they are quickly becoming irrelevant. And you won't be bribing this new generation of black empowerment activists because we understand that this resistance must be leaderless. The message is the leader. The agenda is the leader, not a person. So there aren't any corrupt preachers or any washed up demonstrators or any civil rights retreads who you can pay off and get on the payroll. 
See, the white media tried to figure out if they could get just a little more mileage out of the old scam that they had been running for so many decades. The white media was trying to invent some new black civil rights nobodies like D. Ray McKeeson. But again, the new voices of black media put the word out and now that scumbag can't show his face outside of some white university auditoriums. That's where D. Ray McKeeson has retreated to these days. I would love to say find him there, but he's trying to keep as low profile as possible because he can't actually come to the streets. He can't come to black people. We are educating our people. Black folks are taking their cues from someone other than the white media. And the white media is in a panic about it because they don't have an answer for it. And they have heard what we've had to say and they know where this is going. And as for D. Ray McKeeson, hmm, some new black leader he turned out to be, huh? Only people he can get to follow him are white folks, but they only follow him to the auditorium and then they leave and don't really care about what he had to say. The white media's advice is ridiculous and laughable. But it's exactly what Kamala Harris deserves. A fool deserves to hear foolishness. Telling her, get in front of the cameras. Start some spitball fights with the other candidates in the race. Try to go viral if you can. Kamala's throwing everything at this one. But her kitchen sink strategy has failed to even get anyone's attention. She's a sinking ship and everyone can see it. And idiots like Van Jones, who called her a rising star, well, they look like the morons we knew them to be. Kamala is realizing the same thing that the rest of the Democrats already know, that there is simply no substitute for the black vote, because that's the base of the Democratic Party. Hispanics broke for Trump, as did Asians, as did white women. So these pathetic attempts to try to cobble together some Frankenstein monster of a constituency made up of immigrants and alphabet people and women, white women, though they'll settle for black women if they absolutely have to, that ain't going to work. Trying to figure out, well, can we reverse engineer some sort of so-called constituency, some sort of voter coalition, something that makes it where we can have an end run around the black vote. Since the black vote is now broken bad on us and the black vote is demanding things that we simply are not going to do because it threatens white supremacy. Can we put, can we draw just enough voters? If we can get our, if we can put together some immigrants and put together some LGBTs and some women and some casual racist read white moderates, then, then that'll give us just enough voters where the black vote won't matter. We'll be able to squeak out a victory and we can wag our finger at those black folks, those black empowerment types and tell them, see, see, we did it without you. That's what they're trying to do right now. That's what they are attempting to do right now. This is about trying to make the black vote irrelevant. So all that stuff about black women, they don't give a damn about black women. They could care less about black women. The advice that Kamala Harris is getting is not geared toward winning a presidential race. It's geared toward winning a news cycle. And then you got to ask, how's that working out for Kamala Harris? Did she actually, was she actually dumb enough to take their advice and try to start a spitball fight with people, with presidential candidates at this late date? Was she still silly enough to try it? Well, when you look at what real clear politics had to say, Kamala Harris clearly on her last legs this woman who clearly is at her last ditch at the end of her rope this is what she comes up with she decides to tell elizabeth warren that she ought to join in on calling for trump to be banned from twitter yeah this is the kind of leadership the voters are looking for the most important thing that voters are thinking about right now if we can just get donald trump off twitter yeah, that, that's what that's what's going to galvanize the vote. Getting Donald Trump off Twitter. Now, what was this supposed to be? Was this supposed to be Kamala Harris's half baked way of trying to say that Elizabeth Warren isn't really trying to go at Donald Trump? I mean, she's trying to establish herself as some sort of leader is what Kamala Harris is doing. Why? I'm taking the charge against Donald Trump. They're calling for impeachment, which won't work. There's not enough Democrats in the freaking Senate for it to work, and the Republicans have made it clear that as far as they're concerned, since Lindsey Graham said it best, we're not generating enough angry white men to stay in power, and that being the case, they're not about to dump Trump. They may not like him, but they're not going to do anything about him. 
I don't know who the world these pathetic stunts are meant for, but one thing's for sure, it isn't going to work. And Kamala Harris, trying to figure out if she can go viral against Elizabeth Warren, because she can see that Elizabeth Warren is close to, if not the front runner. Joe Biden is slowly eclipsing. And as for Bernie Sanders after his heart attack, let's just be honest about people looking at him and going, Pfft. If this guy can't even handle a presidential campaign without having a heart attack, the presidency itself is going to kill him. So that's so, so Bernie Sanders, he's pretty much, at this point here, I'm not going to say that he's circling the toilet bowl, but at this point, the Bernie bros ain't going to be able to save him. And Kamala Harris, uh, these stunts cannot possibly get her anything but the ire of white audiences. But then again, she ain't really got many of them left to lose. About the only white people who I can think of who support Kamala Harris are the people who she's paying to be on her staff. And, well, as Politico pointed out, those guys don't like her very much either. So I'm not real sure what she's going to do. It will be amusing in a lunk-headed kind of way to watch her trying to start arguments, thinking if I can just start some beef, if I can get a beef going. That reminds me of Roly-Poly. Roly-Poly was just so doggone sure of himself that if I can get if I can if I can get get the the new new voice of black media to, to, to talk about me if I I'm gonna start some Twitter beef with them I'm, I'm, I'm gonna start some YouTube beef I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and and drop some cuss cuss words and, and what's gonna happen is uh, I'm I'm gonna start beefing with people online online beefing apparently Roly is so new to the internet he just got an internet connection last week from the way that he's acting. Online beefing only works if you already got a following. Roly Poly does not. When a man has allegedly over 300,000 subscribers, but he can't get more than a thousand people to regularly watch his videos, that tells you there's something wrong with those metrics. Something ain't matching up here. So this kind of man bites dog type of um MO that Roly's doing it's the same thing with Kamala Harris. She's trying to be cheap wine, whatever she thinks will appeal to people, but it ain't working. And instead of her looking at herself and going, you know what? It's me. After decades of the California political machine giving me political offices, giving me patronage jobs, well, I'm up against a situation that the political machine isn't going to be able to buy, bribe, cajole, or deceive me out of. We're not going to be able to fool them again. Instead of her facing up to the reality, what she's doing is humiliating herself at this point, and she deserves it. I hope she keeps this up. I hope before it's all over that she's reduced to crying on stage and saying, I don't know what I did wrong. Well, if she said, I don't know what I'm doing, that would be honest and that would be more accurate. But white voters are not going to take well to Kamala Harris continuing to wag her finger at these white candidates. You better believe Nancy Pelosi ain't looking at her and going, oh, Kamala, that's exactly what we need. What she's thinking instead is, will this nigger stop talking back to her betters? That's what Kamala, that's what Nancy Pelosi really thinks. That's what she actually believes. Oh, and before I forget, there's always some idiot who, some of these people who think themselves too clever by half, these clowns saying that, Kamala Harris is probably angling for some sort of vice presidential post. I mean, that's not going to happen. I mean, it didn't happen for Hillary. doesn't happen for any of these people. Um, John Kerry tried it with John Edwards, and we see how that one worked out. Well, maybe she'll get a cabinet position. It's different at the federal level. You actually got to be qualified for some of this stuff. And on top of that, none of these people who she's been smarting off to, Elizabeth Warren damn sure ain't looking for a way to put Kamala Harris in her cabinet. If she makes it to the White House, which she won't. We'll get to that in a moment where Elizabeth Warren, the would-be supposedly front-runner in waiting to hear the white media tell it. We'll talk about her black voter problems in a moment. But there's one more thing that I wanted to mention while it was on my mind. In the political article, while they were talking about Kamala Harris's quickly fading campaign, her one of her campaign senior staff was saying that they were going to double their number of organizers in Iowa and South Carolina. And of course, when you look at Kamala Harris's numbers in both those states, you understand exactly why that is, though California has already become a place where Kamala Harris has no real support. 
no such thing as a candidate who's able to win the presidency without winning their own home state. But Kamala Harris, this woman so clueless, that's why I call this video essay All the Wrong Moves. Her campaign brought in a woman who had been Beto O'Rourke's digital aide for his Senate run. By the way, uh, how did that go for Beto O'Rourke? He's a senator now, isn't he? Oh, wait. So this is what Kamala Harris is doing. I would love to say that she's flailing about, but forget it. At this point, she's already gone under. We're just waiting to see her eyes go dim and see the lights go out at this point, because that's all that's happening here. She's going under. She's drowning. And ain't no coming back. And she deserves every humiliating moment of it. Now, that brings us to another little bit of business. Elizabeth Warren, the would-be front-runner in waiting to hear the white media tell it. You know, there's an old saying that if you can't dazzle them with diamonds, baffle them with BS, Elizabeth Warren has been the epitome of that adage. She hasn't brought us any diamonds, that's for damn sure, no tangibles. She's already been caught on video when that brother d confronted her. Jamie and Fowler, I believe it is, he confronted her and said, hey, you need to cut that check. What about our tangibles? Cut the check. And she goes, cut the check for what? Yeah, that's a moment every bit as blasphemous and damnable as Kamala's. You think I'm going to do something that only benefits black people? No! When Elizabeth Warren did that, forget it. Chapter closed. She might as well have told her staff, go home. I don't really want the presidency. When she pulled that stunt, that was it for her. She only brings the same one-size-fits-all, if black people get something, then everybody else has to get more kind of scam and schemes. That's all she's bringing. College debt forgiveness is fine and all, but it doesn't change the fact that we've had three generations now of black college graduates who got degrees, but still, by and large, weren't able to work in the fields that they went to school for. You see, the problem with suggesting college debt forgiveness is that you miss the real issue. The problem isn't that you got all these young people who have student debt. The problem is that they can't make the level of money that they had been promised. They didn't go to school because they wanted a degree. They went to school because they had been told that this is going to increase your lifetime earning potential. That's what they were told, but that didn't happen. And for most of them, there's simply nothing available in their chosen field. That's the problem. The problem isn't the debt that they're carrying. The problem is they have no way of paying it because they were sold a bill of goods. Where are the jobs and the businesses that were supposed to be waiting for them in their chosen field that they were told were going to be there? You got to get a degree. You got to do this. You got to get, you got to do that. Get your sheepskin. When you graduate, oh, it's going to be, it's still going to be nothing but a walk in the park. But that didn't happen. So this stuff about college debt forgiveness, great. You can have all those black kids out there, along with the white ones who are going to be the main beneficiaries of any college debt forgiveness scheme. And what will happen is, great, you got the debt off their backs. But the question then becomes, well, now what? I spent six years in school so I could get this master's degree. And I'm OK. You got rid of the debt. Great. But I'm trying to find a job in field X, Y, Z. And it's not there. And no one's hiring, or at least they damn sure ain't hiring us. That's the problem. That's the real problem. And Elizabeth Warren ain't talking about that. Elizabeth Warren is per putting on a political performance. Her shtick is basically she's a librarian. She's a nerd and a wonk and she knows it and she embraces that. And that's what she's selling. I'm the most informed person in the room. I know more federal budgetary jargon than anyone else in the room. That's what she's selling herself as. She is the librarian. That's what she's, that's basically the image that she's trying to craft for herself. Vote for the librarian because she's got more book learning and she knows more technical jargon at the federal level than anyone else. And because of that, you ought to make her president. She wants to come off as the authority, the authority, on all things federal, particularly the budget. Okay, I suppose it's an okay gimmick, 
most people will fall for it because they'll hear her suggest a few minor changes and she'll use just enough lingo, enough political and, and academic lingo to make it seem credible. She'll criticize the 1% and that's supposed to be enough. And for most people, it will work and she'll never have to do anything past that. But what about black people, huh? Well, you can see from the article here from Politico, our friends at Politico again, they're talking about what the world is Elizabeth Warren going to do because she ain't got majority black support. She ain't even the official front runner yet, and she's already lacking the support of the Democrat base. I mean, look at that headline. Can Warren win the nomination without majority black support? Well, the obvious answer to that is no, duh. Of course she can't win without majority black support. No Democrat can win without majority black support because the black vote is the base of the Democratic Party. That's a stupid headline, but it's not until you look at the subheading for it that you see exactly what the point, the gist of this so-called article actually is. Interviews with black female polls suggest there's an opening for her and other Democrats to cut into Biden's lead. Now, when they say female polls, they're not talking about black female voters. They're talking about these pathetic black female talking heads, people that I've already exposed. Go back and watch my now, I would say, instant classic video, Black Pack and She the People, White Money's Black Front Group on this, on this very YouTube channel, talking about Adrian Shropshire and Amy Allison. These are two individuals, when they talk about black female polls, that's who they're talking about. These black women who decided they were going to become sock puppets for George Soros and all of these other dark money, white political would-be puppet masters. They're not actually going to black women and asking these questions. They're asking black females who they got on the payroll. So white media is asking their employees, their black female employees who depend on them, uh, what do you think about Elizabeth Warren? Oh, excellent choice, excellent choice. Oh, she's definitely got a chance to get in there. Yeah, that's the game that they're running. Well, according to our old friends over at Morning Consult, they say that Warren's support among black women has inched up from 8% three months ago to 13%. Now, here's the interesting thing. Politico's article says, can Warren win the nomination without majority black support? But when you look at the article itself, it's all about black women. They're not talking about black men. They're not talking about the black community. They're talking about black women in specific. So what does that tell you? The white media is desperately, furiously trying to psychologically masturbate black women. That's what they're trying to say. They're trying to, they already know that black men have already said, you know what? We are solidly not going for any more of these federal elections. We're bowing out of federal elections and keeping our eye on local and state instead, where we can have the greatest impact until you guys bend the knee and bring our tangibles. So black men have already made it solidly clear where we stand. So the white media and the white political establishment are just furiously thinking if we can just psychologically masturbate black women and pat them on the head and tell them how powerful their vote is. And we'll get some of our black female bootlicks out here, a couple of pay on the payroll chumps to spew the nonsense for us. And then the black female vote will fall at our feet. At least that's what the idea is. That's what articles like this are about. And you keep seeing this over and over again. Let's talk about the black vote. Now, black women, you can tell that that's what they were told to say. Well, you're going to say something about black people in general, right? Certainly that would include black men because you're not going to win without 50% of the black vote. If you only get half the black vote, you ain't going anywhere. Well, uh, we figure that if we can get enough black women in there, once we put together our coalition of alphabet people and immigrants, and we'll try to see if we can get white women on board with this student loan forgiveness thing and some other stuff that's gonna, the white women are gonna make out like bandits and black women, women will be left out in the cold. But once we go ahead and put that together with casual racist read white moderates, we'll go ahead and put together this, this monster, this smorgasbord of a so-called voter coalition, and that will take us to victory. 
We don't need black the black male vote. We're going to be appealing to some of these other people, you know, non-traditional Democrat voters. People who the Democrats typically don't reach out to. So we figure we can write off fully half the black electorate. That's okay. We don't need the black male vote. Black females will be fine. At least, that's what they're hoping. Now, does this sound like someone who's looking to actually do something for black people or somebody who's trying to figure out how dumb black people are? Obviously, it's the latter. So as we see, it's not just Kamala Harris who's making all the wrong moves. We have thrown the political establishment into disarray. And this, is, this entropy is only going to increase as we get closer to the primaries, because that's when it's finally going to be in front of the world to see. Right now, what they're trying to do is they're trying to put a pretty face on it, trying to figure out how many black people are stupid enough to be suckered back to the polls when there's nothing in it for them. That's what they're doing right now. They're trying to see if they can get away with something. And when we get to the primaries, when it's time to actually have hard numbers, when you actually have the vote take place, then it will be undeniable that the black vote sat this one out. And it will also be undeniable why we sat it out. Because while Kamala Harris and Elizabeth Warren are tripping over their own shoelaces, putting their foot in their mouths and trying one pathetic pathetic, desperate attempt to get something going, to get some traction, just c making every conceivable and inconceivable mistake under the sun while they just pathetically run in circles chasing their own tails and getting nowhere, setting themselves up for failure while they're busy doing that. Over here on our side, for the first time in a long time, there are black people who are starting to finally make the right moves.